Hi, it's Sandy Wiley. Welcome to my mental health channel. I hope that you like. Give a thumbs up if you like the video. And I hope that <laughs> if you haven't subscribed, <laughs> that you will. And please remember to be kind in the comments. Be kind to me. Be kind to everyone else. And... It's okay to disagree with me. That's fine. Um, but just be kind. All right. That's the only thing I ask. We don't have to agree on everything, but we do need to treat each other with respect. Now, today, when I was, you know, scrolling through my feed, like I, I catch what the weather is on my computer <laughs> and like, um, I catch the news and all these stories that pop up. And one of them said, what is the worst mental illness that you can possibly have? You know, and I was thinking schizophrenia, you know, um, that's pretty bad. Hearing voices and being delusional um, and hallucinating. But it actually said my mental illness, borderline personality disorder. Now, in case you haven't been around long enough i've been on this youtube channel for four years it started out karaoke i've done several videos on my um mental health diagnosis which is borderline personality disorder also i have post-traumatic stress disorder i have um severe crippling anxiety and social disorder um kind of like um an avoidant um personality where i kind of like you know, keep to myself. Um, I also have a, you know, attention deficit disorder. I was recently only the past few years diagnosed with that, but I know I talked a lot about how being a borderline, I can't regulate my feelings. It's like a broken thermostat. I'm either like, you know, boiling hot or freezing cold like there's no gray area this all or nothing um there's no in between either i love you or i hate you you know and it can alternate on a whim depending on what you do <laughs> depending on what you say um i have an extreme fear of abandonment that's just so you know if, if you haven't watched my borderline videos about what a, being a borderline is um it, i have a very hard time keeping relation maintaining relationships the longest relationship i maintain is with my husband been married 36 years <laughs> and with my children too i've maintained a relationship with both of my children my severely um traumatic brain injured son is 28 and my other son 26 other than that i haven't maintained any long the longest relationship Aside from that is with my, one of my psychologists, Dr. Dr. Richard Geis. That was 16 years. And as far as girlfriends, my best friend Holly, that went 12 years. And those were the longest relationships outside of my husband. Jobs, I never lasted on a job more than five, five and a half years. That's right. So, but, I, you know, I've done videos on that. So, I'm not trying to go over that. What I'm trying to focus on on this video today is how do I deal with the extreme intense um, emotions that I get from being a borderline. So this video might help you even if you don't have to have borderline personality disorder really to um, get something from this video because what I'm going to do is dis discuss how I deal with my emotions much better now than I ever did before. Now, I noticed that um, a couple of things will set me off, all right? First of all, I went psycho, mad psycho when the staff member beat my son. So if you hurt, if you hurt my children or something, I'm going to go all, I'm going to go all psycho on you, Okay. But aside from some traumatic, um, you know, a staff member beating my son up, giving him a black eye and bruises all over his body, aside from some major, you know, life-altering thing like that, which is, I don't, I can't even tell you how to deal with it because I couldn't deal with it, you know. How do I control my everyday emotions? Well, I notice when I get very close 
to someone, that's when I can't handle my emotions. So if we are casual friends, I, I'm not going to be, I'm going to be pretty good with it. It's, um, it's like if I fall in love with someone really, um, then, and they hurt me and then that's when I really can't, that's when I have a very hard time, um, dealing with my feelings, you know, um, I can become violent. Um, I can, yes, I've had, I, I'm a full fledged borderline here. So, so what I'm saying is now I'm very, very careful about who I allow. I'm setting up boundaries. So this is the first thing, um, in dealing with intense emotions, set boundaries, who you give your emotions to. Okay. So I'm much, much more careful now of what kind of relationships, um, I get into, uh, because I'm never going to let myself be caught up, um, in, in the wrong type of person. Let me tell you something. A person can make you or can break you. Yes. Listen to what I said. A person can make you or can break you. And if you don't believe that, just look, just look back at news stories, okay? All right? Marrying the wrong person. And like Shanann Watts, you know? She married Chris Watts. Thought she had the happily ever after. He murdered her, her unborn baby, and murdered her two daughters, their two daughters, you know? So marrying him pretty much wiped out her life. Now, marrying the right person, um, there's this woman I know from um, a poetry reading. Her name is Robin Stratton. Uh, and we're Facebook friends. I met her at a poetry reading. Well, she had, you know, you know what we call your average, she never married, your average life. Uh, she she worked at a publisher for a um, big table. I think she was a publisher of big table publishing. This and indie publishing. And, you know, it wasn't bad. It wasn't great. It was, you know, your average person. Then she met Don Johnson, the man, my husband has his books, who discovered Lucy, the first eight, the first female, the first female. Look it up. All right. He's, he's a successful, um, archaeologist I mean he he's brilliant he, he's renowned world renowned okay he's he's rich and he's famous okay that's that's what he is rich and famous and ever since she married him now she's traveling all around the world first class drinking champagne I mean she's on a plane every other week somewhere all over the world and I mean literally all over the world. <laughs> so, her life went to, you know, mediocre, humdrum a little bit to world class, first class traveler with a rich and famous husband who gives speeches around the world. He discovered Lucy. Look it up, Lucy. The first female, um, our ancestor, Lucy. That's what he named her. So, that's why I'm mentioning those two things. They're both extremes, of course. Is because in order to for me to regulate my emotions, see, I need to be with someone that is calming, consistent, grounded like my husband. See, so what I'm telling you is if you get with the wrong person, it can be like gasoline to a fire. When I was with the psychologist, right, who I had a two-year sexual affair with, he, it was like he threw gasoline on the fire, okay? It was a combustion, all right? So first you have to be really, really choosy who you choose in your life, all right? Because if you have the wrong person in your life, you're not going to be able to regulate your yourself especially if you have a mental disorder like mine borderline personality disorder 
so it's fair so before i would just like you know dive in and you know whatever it didn't matter you know <laughs> now i'm hyper vigilant and cautious who i allow into my life because i know that once the person gets in because i'm an emotional person once a person gets into my psyche and i start having feelings then it's gonna it's much easier let's put it this way it's much easier not to get into something than to get than to try to get out of it see what i'm saying it's much much easier don't go there not to get into it then get into it and now shit too late how am i gonna get out of it see just like with the shrink who had the two-year affair with me he shouldn't have got into it because once he got into it he couldn't get out of it see so what i'm telling you is be very careful who you allow into your life now what if you say well i can't help um who's around me like at work you know um there's certain people that really piss me off or you know you don't have to social you know you don't have to uh maybe you're in the working environment where you have to interact but you don't you can just min bare minimum interact with someone who's going to be like that you have to think of your own mental health okay if family isn't good for you then Good riddance. You don't have to be around family members um, who are going to, you know, stir stir the pot. You know what I mean? Stir you up. This is what I'm trying to say at work. Okay. You say, well, I got to make a living. You know what I mean? You don't understand. I got to make a living. I got to tolerate people's shit. No, you don't. I mean, if, if it came down to that, I'd quit my job and find another job. And don't tell me there aren't other jobs out there. If it came down to my mental, and I have. Maybe that's why, because I'm a bottle. <laughs> I've walked off jobs because it was no good for me mentally anymore to stay on the job. So if it gets down to me or them, I'm going to pick me all the time. And I'm going to walk off that job or I'm going to walk away. I walked away from my in-laws, you know, because it was stressing me out. It was too much on me. And mentally, it was, it's mental anguish. So what I'm trying to tell you is you can walk away from a job family a friendship a romance whatever it is you can't be around people that are gonna you know be the gasoline you know on the fire you need to be around people who don't bring you any drama people low-key consistent dependable people who you can depend on who care about you you know who don't stir you up so don't get into a relationship, you know, and if you are in one, get out, get out of it. Because I'm telling you, for your own mental health, get out of it. Now, another thing I do um, to keep regulating, you know, regulate my emotions is I, I wake up like at four, at four o'clock. I'm not kidding you. I wake up at four and I go to bed at seven. All right. And from that time, I'm pretty busy all day long, except for maybe a couple of hours in the afternoon. And what do I do? I write, okay? I'm published in magazines, my poetry. I write, I've written like three dozen books. Um, I do videos, you know? Um, I market myself. Marketing is, you know, but whatever, whatever it is you do, okay? I exercise. There's a lot of things I do. But what I do is I stay busy, you know, because a busy mind is a healthy mind, okay? I don't lull around. I don't really give myself time to think, you know? Um, I, stay very, I stay very active. I have a schedule, and I stick to that schedule every day, you know? I stick to it. So whatever your schedule is, you know, uh, make a schedule if you don't have one, because I think it's very healthy, um, it doesn't mean you can't break away from it. I'm not trying to tell you to be rigid or something, but I'm telling, but I'm telling you a schedule does help you. Um, it helps regulate you. It helps regulate me. Let's put it this way. Having a schedule. So when you wake up in the morning, you okay. All right. I wake up. 
this is what I do. I have my breakfast. I have my coffee. I have to have, I can't wake up. I can't, you know, think without coffee. You know, maybe you're one like me or maybe you're not. And in the evening, in the late afternoon, I unwind. I have my wine. I unwind. Okay. But, and then I do my thing, you know, your thing might be different. Whatever you have passionate for. If you're passionate, uh, if you're an artist, then, then do that. Set aside time every day to do your craft, okay? Um, set, aside time, set aside time every day to exercise. It doesn't have to be like, I hate exercise. Well, I hate exercise too. I'm not telling you what. I, I just say go out for a walk or something. I'm not saying do this or do that. I'm just saying some sort of um, movement, flow. Whether you go to yoga, do yoga at home, I don't care what you do. Just move your body. <laughs> okay, you see what I'm saying? I'm not telling you to, you know, run on a treadmill for an hour. I'm not telling you stuff like that. I'm just saying that if you have a consistency, it will help regulate um, your emotions. If you have like a um, a schedule, a consistent schedule where you know what you do, you're doing the same thing every day. That, that's going to help you. It's helped me. Of course, being around the right people. Avoiding the people that stir you up. And being with people that, you know, calm, calm you down. Okay? So, I've learned to... And spend time alone. There. In nature. I love nature. Even if you just go outside and, look, and, you know, watch the birds. Listen to the birds sing or something, you know? Or watch the squirrels climb the trees or chase each other. <laughs> spend time alone. We all need to spend time alone. You need to get away from everyone, everybody, and everything. And just have space, you know. Just have space. Um, take in the air, you, you know. Um, go, go outside. I believe everyone needs air, okay. Everyone needs, you know. To be outside at every single day um whether it's a walk and alone you know you want to be alone outside uh, go for a walk in the woods i mean we're not talking about things that are expensive we're not talking about things that are far away we, i'm just telling you nature get back to nature like thoreau says get back to nature you know spend that quality time with yourself all right Spend time alone. You need that time to just appreciate you. You know, like give yourself a hug and just spend that quality time alone. And and stay away from negative people, all right? People that are going to stir you up. You know the type that stir you up. Like when you're around them, you start getting anxious, you know? Um, the Brad Bedars of the world. Remember that last video, that shrink that almost gave me a nervous breakdown? Those type of people. You know, those type of people that, you know, kind of... They know, you know, they give you little digs, you know. Um, they just kind of stir you up. But, you know, you just don't feel good when you're around them. And afterwards, when you, you know, after you've been with them, it's like you're more tense. No, just, you got to break away from that shit. You know, break away from those type of people. Please, believe me, I know that. Uh, um, and spend more time alone. Because I feel, you know, without all that drama in my life, just like peace, you know, um, and it really is, it, it, I feel peace when I'm in nature, I feel peace when I'm alone, um, I like having a consistent schedule, that helps me, um, that helps regulate me, actually, it helps regulate me when I know, you know, um, I, you know, and, and the day just goes by so fast, it's like I blink, and the whole day is gone, instead of those days that, like, drag on and on and on because i know you know i have a system it works for me <laughs> and since i've had this system and since i'm very careful who i choose in my life no shrinks of course um i feel more regulated i feel more grounded i'm you know i'm less you know um like swinging like this from love to hate or, you know, from all to nothing. I'm more like my shirt, gray. <laughs> I'm more like, you know, I'm not have, having to deal with intense, extreme emotions anymore. 
because I'm not around the people who bring that on, that, you know, who, who cause that drama in my life anymore. So I'm very careful, and I have a schedule, and I exercise, and I write, because I'm a writer. And I do these videos, because I love doing these videos. So do what you feel passionate for. Try to have a schedule. Try to get out every single day into the fresh air. Make some quality time alone with yourself, okay? These things help regulate me, and I am sure that these things will help regulate you. And if they can regulate someone with borderline personality disorder, <laughs> they certainly can help you. All right, I hope I gave you some good advice there. Until next time, take care.